both of you and hello everyone i hope everyone's on discord i can actually multitask i teach uh for sand so i can like look down and see you all talking so uh let's just start out by saying hey how's everyone doing good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you are where are you all located if uh if your opsec allows who's coming from the furthest place Anyone from another country? Any Europeans out there? Ooh, look, I see a few of you. Some some names I recognize. Costa Rica, bienvenido. Australia, I think Australia won. California, fantastic. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, the reason I uh, mentioned Discord is that you can ask questions as I'm speaking to you, and I may see it and answer it immediately, or if you uh, are looking into the future, I might just have another slide that will cover that. So um, definitely post that, um, any questions there. And again, thank you for coming. My name is George Archias. Thank you for that uh, intro and thank you Grimcon and everyone behind the scenes. There's like a whole team that's required to put a virtual conference together. So shout out to all of them um, and all, all the folks at Grim that are making this happen, all the volunteers, et cetera. So appreciate that. Uh, I do not have all the creds uh, of our keynote speaker, uh, but I do have some experience in the commercial space. Um, I'm the chief technology officer. officer uh, I'm already messing up. Uh, I'm the CTO at Scythe, whatever that stands for, um, and one of the co-creators of the C2 Matrix, which is what we're going to cover uh, here. And I've done a few things. I love giving back to the community, so speaking at conferences, especially free conferences, is awesome. Um, some of the things we've done is the release the Purple Team Exercise Framework that we will actually be going through in our workshop later today. So um, if you want to learn about Purple Teaming and do some command and control, do some adversary emulation, and then detect it with, through detection engineering, uh, we have a couple of site folks uh, running through that, Chris Peacock, who is our resident detection engineer, and, and Elaine, who runs support at site, are all going to be there uh, doing that. So that's at one. We'll cover some of that. Um, prior to site, I ran the offensive team at Citigroup. So everything from vulnerability assessment to pen testing to red teaming. And that's kind of where I really got into C2 stuff. Um, also a SANS certified instructor and author of a red team course there and a contributor to some things you might have heard or seen like MITRE ATT&CK, Atomic Red Team, CVSS version 3 and 3.1, uh, and the Global Financial Markets Association built a framework there for regulatory compliance. So that's a little bit about me. Feel free to uh, follow me there on Twitter or connect on LinkedIn. I do uh, love talking to everyone and see how things are evolving. And that's essentially what we're gonna talk about today is command and control and how it has evolved. Now, for anyone uh, that has not used or knows what C2 is, I'll give a little intro just to bring everyone up to speed. Uh, some of you may have used C2 before, uh, but essentially C2 stands for command and control. It's uh, the ability to communicate with a, an asset in a particular system in the cybersecurity world. Uh, generally, you take over a system, you execute code in there, and you have to communicate with that system to tell it what you want to do. Um, so by law, I'm required to show at least something about MITRE ATT&CK. So the MITRE ATT&CK tactics are here on the top. Um, they have grown significantly, but the big one is command and control, one of my favorite ones. Um, and the thing about command and control is that we all use this. Uh, as Johnny said right before the talk is, this is important for red teamers, blue teamers, really anyone needs to understand how this happens. Uh, because without communication, you don't have any control, which means you would have to build a worm. Now, do any of you recall any recent worms that we've seen out there? Uh, we can go back all the way to the Morris worm back in the 80s. Don't expect many to uh, recall that one, but there have been a lot since. Probably the newer ones are things like Not Petya and WannaCry 
and um, Stuxnet, right? All those um, got out of control, right? They were all, they've all gone out of control because there was no um, central C2 for them. And essentially they all got out and that's how we know about them. But other than those, most attacks have some sort of communication channel. Again, this is taking over a system and being able to uh, communicate with it. So our focus here is gonna be on command and control frameworks, but command and control as a channel is very simple. Over on the left, we have a target system. They might've gotten a phishing email. They were compromised some way, somehow, right? Initial access is a matter of time, uh, many, many ways of doing that. But once you gain initial access, you execute code and you establish communication to your command and control server, which is over here on the right. This is actually Empire. Uh, quick question here on the expert track channel. Do any of you have experience? Have you played with any C2s? And so which ones? Have you played with any C2s? And if so, which ones? Uh, and I see that uh, message going back to energy drinks with Code Red. Yes, Code Red was also a worm also got out of control. Um, CS, which uh, stands for Cobalt Strike, not CrowdStrike, and Covenant, cool, cool, cool. Some at work and on my own, so someone developed something. Ooh, there we go, Empire, Mythic, Posh, mostly from the RTO course, yeah. Duct tape, command and control, never seen that one. That's an interesting one. Um, so yeah, over here on the right, you can see um, a year ago, we hosted a the user conference at site called Unicorn, because we love unicorns. I don't know if you've seen these guys, they sell unicorns. Um, and one of the things we did was I capture the flag called Know Your Payload. And our theory was that a lot of people know how to build payloads, but might not know everything that actually happens in the background. So built a couple payloads, put up a bunch of C2 servers. Um, in particular, it was a Posh, an Empire, and a Scythe server. And we gave these payloads. And I thought, are people actually going to run these payloads in their environment? And if you look very closely, we actually had 457 uh, payloads execute and connecting to this C2 server we had put up on DigitalOcean. Uh, it's the most I've seen on, on Empire. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of agents connected. So um, that C2, it seems most of you all know how C2 works. So that's great. We will just continue on. Um, where did C2 Matrix come from? What was the idea? Well, back in July 2019, I was writing uh, Security 564, actually rewriting it. Uh, Joe Best was the original uh, author there. I rewrote it and I used Empire um, as the C2 we are going to use in the labs because for a two-day course you're going to teach someone command and control and a lot of things about red teaming you don't you can't just spend the entire time on a C2 framework so we used Empire as the main C2 and it was mostly because it was the most reliable and consistent C2 it came out like in 2016 very reliable and you need that in a class environment I know John mentioned he does some teaching and when you're teaching a topic and someone executes it and follows the direction, you want to make sure that it executes reliably and consistently every time. You don't want to be troubleshooting a tool when you're teaching a particular procedure, a particular TTP, right? So back then, Empire was definitely the most reliable and consistent, built the class around that, turned the class in, and then July 31st occurs and this happens. Uh, tweet from one of the maintainers of um, Empire saying, hey, everyone knows and knows how to detect PowerShell. We're not going to support uh, Empire anymore. I said, all right, cool. So let's figure out another C2 that we can use that's actively maintained for the course. I started asking around um, and I got a whole bunch of different answers. I actually went to SANS instructor chat uh, Slack where 
you know, Ed Scotus is on there, Tim Medine, John Strand, uh, Jeff McJunkin, right? Ask all those folks, hey, what C2 do you use? And I got eight different answers. Someone's like, Covenant, just like you all just did, right? Oh, I've used Covenant, I've used uh, Mythic, or I've used Fosh, and Mythic back then wasn't really called Mythic, it was called Appflow, uh, et cetera. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's figure out which one to use for my class. Then in September, uh, right around DerbyCon, the last DerbyCon, rest in peace, DerbyCon, we will miss you. Awesome, awesome conference. Um, had a great time. Uh, remember some parts of it, thanks to a friend, Carlos Vendromini, who uh, took care of me after a few drinks uh, before I broke my phone, was, was not a good sight. But I was there uh, talking to Bryson and Adam Machinchi about you know all these C2s and which ones. Um, they use and all that. And Bryson was doing a talk uh, where he was trying to show Caldera. And if you use Caldera back in the day, Caldera was not very reliable or consistent. And we came up with this idea of just, you know, why don't we evaluate these C2s and track them? So we started evaluating these C2s. And in November 2019, we launched um, the C2 matrix. And as any project goes, you have to have some goals because um, you might get uh, scope creep, right? So the goals were to choose the best modern replacement for Empire, one that's reliable, consistent, user-friendly, and that meets the requirements of a red team. I was, again, working at City at that time, running the red team there, and we needed operational security, right? Some encryption between a system you compromise and your uh, your server. You needed multiple C2 channels, so HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, etc. cetera. Um, ability to build different payloads off of your, um, out of your stagers so that you can execute, say, in a Microsoft Word document or execute the uh, DLLs and uh, all these other low bass ways of executing right and custom profiles you have to be able to customize this because a c2 is kind of obvious uh on the network right especially when you use some of these default profiles of calling back like every five seconds or every 10 seconds etc um so other than that we wanted some other things i worked at an enterprise uh having a Proxy aware C2 was important. Many enterprises have proxies going outbound, right? You don't just allow access to the internet in every way, shape, or form. You have to go through a proxy. So having a proxy aware payload was important. Had to be able to pivot internally because C2 is only one tactic, right? Of a minor attack. Lateral movement is, is generally required. And oh yeah, we're running a red team. There's no I in team, so we needed a multi-user C2, and of course, something that, that was maintained. So we put together this evaluation lab. Um, essentially have Windows and Linux servers as the attackers. They were on one side of a network, uh, all going through a PFSense uh, firewall. PFSense is free, easy to customize. You can have different segments, you can send it um, and get like NetFlow data, you can get IDS, you can you get some visibility there. So all this I actually set up on my laptop. You don't need like extra, um, you don't need any extra hardware for this. You can do all this with VMware. Um, and then some victim systems, a Windows one running Wireshark, running Sysmon, Linux system running TCP DOM, Mac, et cetera, and have some sort of visibility to know what's actually happening because we're gonna be downloading a whole bunch of free stuff from the internet. And do you trust everything you download from the internet? Probably not, right? Um, so we wanted visibility and see what's really happening. Um, just looking here at some of the questions. Um, yeah, so Empire, Python, it was Python Empire. That was the original um, build of it. So the server side was on Python and then it built payloads in PowerShell. Um, and that's why it came out as PowerShell Empire. Um, it really was a combination of a bunch of PowerShell projects. 
um, all put together. So the authors like Harm Joy, for instance, was one. He has uh, Power Sploy and Power View and all those were all brought together in Empire. And yes, that, that's a Star Wars reference. Um, do want to note that Empire today is actually maintained uh, by DC Security. So they, uh, Empire is alive and well. It's not only PowerShell um, payloads now. They do have some C-sharp um, and some other payload types as well. Um, is Atomic uh, Red Team considered a C2? No. Atomic Red Team does not have command and control. Atomic Red Team are atomic tests, tests that you grab a uh, command and you execute it on a particular system manually. Um, it does not have command and control. Um, let me see what other questions there. Uh, all right, cool. So what features mattered and what were we looking for? Well, we want to know where uh, and how this server worked. Was it a Python server? Was the server side built in um, C Sharp, in C, et cetera? Where were the stagers or the implants built for? So, for example, Empire originally was PowerShell implants. Now we see a lot of C Sharp uh, implants or stagers. We wanted to see the user interface. If it was multi user, that was very important. Uh, if it was a web uh, accessible, if it was a GUI, if it was a command line, uh, we actually added dark mode as a joke, but apparently a lot of people care about dark mode. Um, if there's an API, and if we could build implants for different operating systems, because as a red teamer, you're going to go attack, um, you know, Windows systems, Linux system, Mac systems, and depending on that, you had to choose your C2. And communication channel. This one was pretty important. All the different ways of communicating um, with your C2. And the typical one, like, 80% probably of the attacks we see today use HTTPS, right, as a communication channel. HTTPs generally allow outbound everywhere. Sometimes it's through a proxy, um, but that that's generally the, the most important one we see today. There's others. There's TCP. If you've used Metasploit, right, the re reverse TCP shells and all that. Um, HTTP2, HTTP3 might not have visibility in your organization. They're newer protocols, as is uh, DNS over HTTPS, some old school ones, et cetera. So all of this um, was built in the uh, most used hacking tool. So InfoSec professionals as a whole use this one particular tool more than anything else. Um, it could be Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, but essentially spreadsheets. It's the number one tool used by InfoSec people. I don't know if if uh, you all uh, spend a lot of time in Excel or in uh, or in Google Sheets, but you talk to other people in the in the infosec industry, it's essentially the the number one infosec tool out there, along with PowerPoint. Um, so you know those are the the top two. Um, so we built it like this as a, a way to to see it. Um, I'm going to do a little demo of that right now in in a couple seconds. Um, we also launched a website to make this prettier. Um, there's an ask the C2 matrix, so you can find out what C2 you wanted to use, as well as documentation. So there's a how to setting up these C2s. There's a VM. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so let me uh, go ahead and show that here real quick. We'll pop open this uh, C2 matrix. So Here's the C2 matrix website. The matrix is the golden source. It's a Google sheet page. So if I click that and load it up, um, you can see the name of the C2. Um, so you can scroll down here and, you know, we were talking about empire. So we'll use empire as a, as a, an example here. It's a BSD three license, meaning that you can use this, right? All uh, it's free. There's no price. There's a GitHub for it. So you can access that. Um, there, here's the website, by the way, let me post that over here on, uh, on our page, um, on discord. So you have the GitHub where you can download it, the Twitter, if you want to contact the, the people that, uh, do it and then who evaluated it. 
And you can see there's a whole bunch of people I have evaluated uh, C2s. You can do this as well. I'll also talk about contributions and all that. The version was 305. There's way later versions now. Um, there's a how-to for some of these. So you can actually click on this how-to page and it tells you how to set up Empire. Some have videos, some have installs, et cetera. Um, it's available on the SANS Slingshot VM and it's available on Kali. I actually worked with some of the folks at uh, Offensive Security that released the Kali um, distro so that you can get C2s on there as well. And then here you can see the server. The server in this case was Python and the implants were created with PowerShell. It was multi-user with this thing called Starkiller. Um, it has a GUI, it has dark mode, it has an API. You can create implants for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Communication, uh, mainly over HTTP and HTTPS. And then over here, you see some of the capabilities we looked at, like the key exchange. So when you have a payload, it has a key hard-coded into it to communicate with the C2 server for operational security. Um, it doesn't allow for steganography, which is hiding things in images. Is it proxy aware? Does it allow domain fronting, custom profiles, jitter, working hours, et cetera, right? So we've been populating this um, quite a bit and uh, lots of things have changed. So it's kind of like the, the intro of the C2 matrix if you've never, um, never seen this before. Um, so let me close out uh, this stuff and get back on our presentation, um, which is really the core of the talk, right? Is what has changed, right? What has changed um, since we started this project? Well, more C2s. Um, back in November, 2019, when this was released, there was 30 C2s in the C2 matrix. Last year, November, 2020, uh, there were 60. And this year around November, I think now we're up to 90, 88. So re really big growth in uh, C2s that are available. Um, but really um, all of these are not C2s or C2 frameworks. So C2 is command and control. A C2 framework is different than just command and control. A C2 framework is modular, it allows you to build things in. Because one thing is having the communication channel, the other thing is giving you execution, giving you the ability to do lateral movement, right? All the features that come in a C2. One thing is just having a shell, the other is having all these different modules. So we don't currently distinguish between C2s and C2 frameworks. They're just all listed there. Um, and then what we found out as well is that writing a C2 does not equal maintaining a C2. So some people will write a C2, put it on GitHub, people use it, um, and then it's never maintained. Um, so we see quite a bit of that. But again, you can't complain about this because you didn't pay for it, right? Um, so that that's become quite evident. We've added, um, is it actively maintained? And to be actively maintained, it needs to have been updated within the last year. So if it's been updated within the last year, we'll say it's actively maintained. And of course, there's a little debate going on on Twitter. Not sure if you all are on Twitter um, or if you've been part of this debate. Um, and it's the offensive security tool debate, the OST debate. Um, essentially, one side of the um, argument says that you shouldn't release these tools for free because malicious actors are using it, while the other side of the argument says, do release these tools because this is how we learn and then we can defend better. So we're not gonna go into that debate. It's been going on for a couple of years now. Uh, but that's definitely still going alive and well. I see some of you uh, may have heard of it, some of you may not, but that definitely has occurred. One of the cool things though, that um, I wanna give a shout out to and actually uh, hopefully get you all working on this is sponsorware. So you have open source stuff that's built by developers. And a lot of times they build this on their free time. And then large organizations go and they download these free open source tools from GitHub, they look at the code, they use it, and they get a bunch of value out of it. 
and then something doesn't work and they create a issue in uh, GitHub, right? They don't create a pull request, they create an issue. They say, hey, Marcello in this example, he's bike leader on uh, Twitter. Um, he has created a whole bunch of awesome things um, in particular and related to this talk, uh, a C2 called Silent Trinity. So, hey, Marcello, this doesn't work, man. Can you get this to work? Come on, come on, come on. It's like, Marcello's doing this for free, you know? Like, so he came out and he said, look, I'm going to put some of these out as sponsor work. Sponsor work means that you can go on GitHub or GitLab or a variety of different um, platforms and essentially pay them to support. And there's different ranges. You can say, hey, you know, I use a lot of Marcello's tools. My company should probably pay him, I don't know, $300 a month because we get a lot of value out of this. Um, or you can say, you know, I'm paying out of pocket. I can give him five bucks a month, right? And we've seen this kind of pick up. Uh, on the right here, you see BC Security did this as well. And, um, and a lot of others are kind of starting to do that. So we've seen that grow uh, for sure. And not sure if you all sponsor, you contribute. If you do sponsor something, what do you sponsor? Let, let us know on Get, uh, Discord. Um, what, what, what do you sponsor, right? Responder is another one, right? Not really a C2, but definitely something a lot of people have used in their enterprise and probably did not help the developers, right? So big fan of this model. The other model that we're seeing quite a bit is commercialized C2s. Now, full disclosure, I'm the CTO at site. We have, uh, we are on this list. So uh, do know that it was actually spun out from Grim. So this is GrimCon. So full disclosure there before we, we continue on and talk about the commercial C2s. But this number has grown significantly. It's now 12% of the C2s on the C2 matrix are commercial C2s. Um, some that we've seen are Brute Retell. This is by someone uh, by Dark Vortex, also on Twitter as Paranoid Ninja, created uh, one of these. Uh, Cobalt Strike, of course, I think all of you have heard of that. Uh, the big news since C2 Matrix started tracking all this is that they were bought by Help Systems, the makers of Core Impact. So we'll see what happens there. but. Joe Vest is one of the folks uh, running that and working there, uh, personal friends. So uh, you've, you may have heard or used this. There's other companies that are like consulting companies, kind of like Grimm, uh, creating site, um, that uh, are doing this. Pivot Labs built Haven. Immunity has one called Innuendo. Then they were bought by Cytera, which was then spun out into AppGate, et cetera. Um, Nighthawk is, is the new one in town. This one was just released this month. Um, we kind of knew this was coming. These are the folks from MDSEC, uh, also a consulting company out of the UK. Um, Outflank, another consulting company, and the Netherlands um, has a tool called OST uh, that stands for Offensive uh, or Outflank Security Tool. And they have a stage one C2. Then Red Code Labs has this one that I can't pronounce. Um, Caldera, the folks there, left and created one called Create Prelude. Um, NetSpy, another consulting company, bought Red Team Toolkit, a uh, site I already mentioned, and then S2 Security, another consulting company, has one called Voodoo. So essentially all these consulting companies that do very sophisticated and advanced red teaming have built custom tools and then because there's now a market to actually support uh, a, a C2 framework, they are building this out. Um, over at the right, a shout out to Elemental X2. Um, there was a little bit of a, a Twitter uh, spat going on between Brute, Rattel, and Nighthawk over which one was better. And then someone made a, a meme of Cobalt Strike coming and bringing them down. And then someone put the C2 matrix just running through them all because you don't have to use just one C2. You can actually use quite a bit. So we'll talk about that. Um, a time check real quick, uh, just on the expert track channel, Johnny. Uh, what time do I have to wrap up? Is that 12.30 or someone? Just so I know, I think I have 15 minutes, but confirm that for me. So one of the things that we've seen is specialization, right? In InfoSec, you are probably an example of specialization, right? 
hands up if you were once the solo security person in your organization. At one point, you were probably that. Um, so if you were, you've seen this uh, kind of evolve, right? Now we have security architects, we have people that focus on application security, on network security, uh, on security operations center, data, uh, digital forensics and incident response, cyber threat intel, threat hunting, and offense, right? And offense in itself has changed. When I started at City like 12 years ago, we were like six or seven people doing everything offense. And then that um, started, you know, spreading out. We started doing vulnerability assessment. So running vulnerability scans and then uh, prioritizing those vulnerabilities, validating them, et cetera. Then pen testing, where you actually exploit vulnerabilities. And bug bounty, where you find vulnerabilities. And vulnerability research, where you write ODAs, kind of like uh, one of the things that Grimm does, right? And then of course, red teaming which focuses on testing people, process, and technology. And then within red teaming itself, we saw this evolve. Uh, my red team started, I mentioned Carlos Vendramini earlier on. He was one of the original red teamers uh, over at City. Still keep contact with him. Um, and we went from, hey, we now have, you know, seven or eight people on the red team. And while everyone kind of knew how to do everything, we started specializing. So we had developers building custom tooling and custom ways of custom procedures, custom tradecraft. We had our operators that were hands-on keyboard once initial access was obtained. We had people that specialized on initial access and things like social engineering. Oh, Carlos is on Discord, there he goes. He was one of the social engineering uh, folks way back when um, gaining access. Now I think his focus is on cloud and whatnot, but. It was really that specialization that allowed us to be and show more value. And really where we've gotten to now is that an operator, a red team operator is not necessarily a red team developer. And Tim Malcolm Vedder, uh, who used to work over at Walmart and the red team there, when he wrote this blog post back in 2019, it's like three years ago, if anyone's keeping track of time nowadays, said the future of adversaries is software development. And we're seeing that. So one of the things we're seeing is training specialized in developing command and control and implants. Here are two, these already passed, but you can keep your eye on them. One was at Eco Party, the premier Latin American conference. It's like DEF CON of South America. Uh, it's in Argentina. Uh, there was a, a workshop on that. Then uh, CIFCON over in, uh, in Europe, did another one. Uh, shout out to Joff and the Wild West Hack folks and Anti Siphon. They have a course called Enterprise Attack Emulation and C2 Implant Development. That one's coming up. And Rasta Mouse, if uh, someone actually mentioned RFTO on Discord. Um, and this is um, a new course that, uh, that he put out through Zero Point Security. So the same C uh, RTO course. Um, on C2 development and C sharp. So lots of specialization on that. Uh, and there I see Kenny saying operator is not the same as dev. Yes, a hundred percent. We are seeing that, right? And attack infrastructure, right? Those that do attack infrastructure know how hard this is. This screenshot here is actually taken from uh, my friend, uh, Mark Smee. Uh, he runs Outflank and um, this actually is a uh, picture of Red Elk. Red Elk is a Red Teamers Elastic instance um, where you can monitor all your Red Team app, um, infrastructure. But you know, just from looking at this, you can see over on the right, you have multiple C2 servers in a single Red Team operation. And then you have a bunch of redirectors, right? And you use Red Elk to track all that. And of course, if you're doing blind red teaming or stealth red teaming, you have a white cell or trusted agents, uh, which is a more descriptive way of calling them nowadays. And it's it's quite a bit, right? So a lot of best practices we've learned this year. And uh, I love some of the quotes here. Uh, Hacking LZ, uh, he is the CTO at, it's Justin, uh, L's over at TrustedSec. <laughs> I don't know what happened this time. I think uh, 
Cobalt Strike had a vulnerability or something. And he wrote, it's 2021, don't expose those C servers directly to the internet, right? Use redirectors. And one of the most common redirectors is domain fronting. But domain fronting is dead, right? It's getting caught. Oh no, never mind. Red, domain fronting's alive. It actually still works. Oh, but Microsoft might ban your account. Yeah, but it still works, right? So uh, domain fronting is, is still one method. It's a particular technique under uh, command and control. And now we're seeing serverless functions being used for domain fronting, essentially using Azure or Lambda or Cloudflare worker, cloud workers to do your redirection from a purely serverless uh, method. So there's a whole bunch of this. I, that could be its own talk. Um, I posted a lot about it at the howto.c2matrix.com. Um, other things we're seeing is frameworks for C2s. So in a particular red team engagement, you might actually have not just multiple C2 servers, but multiple C2 frameworks running. And these folks um, out of Argentina have this framework called Sutica that uses the APIs of the C2 so you can be in one web app and actually administer your implants from a variety of different C2s all in that same window. Uh, so it's pretty cool, very helpful from a um, from a operations perspective. Uh, other, other, uh, other, sorry, I'm going fast. I see I have like seven minutes left. Um, other ones that we see is abandon. This is to build your your infrastructure quickly because every uh, exercise, every red team you build um, is gonna have its own infrastructure. So how can you automate that build out of buying domains, doing redirectors, having visibility, et cetera? It becomes a full-time job. Um, another cool one that I saw uh, is Havoc. This one uh, uses AWS and spins up um, using Terraform your C2. So a lot of focus on that as well. So not only you know the C2 side, but all the infrastructure required. And why does it require all of this? Because we're getting better as an industry, right? These C2s come out and we test them and we see them and um, we improve, making the red team's life harder. But if you make our life harder, that means we are improving. So um, just based on the time here, um, what's the roadmap? We're going to continue to ev evaluate the C2s. We want to map more to what the C2s can do other than command and control. What are all these new features? I see uh, Dom Chell uh, just joined the Discord there. Uh, he's one of the developers for Nighthawk, which I mentioned earlier. Awesome, awesome stuff being built there and really mapping to what you can do afterwards, right? We're seeing a lot of things like around EDR, uh, EDR evasion, NDR evasion, et cetera. Um, so really mapping that out. And really lowering the curve, right? Like all of these tools, or at least most, most all of them, right? I think 88% of them are free. You can go on GitHub and test them. So if anyone could go on GitHub and pull these down and test them, then you should too. That's really where we keep pushing for attack, detect, and respond, right? You want to attack yourself so that you can improve your detection and be able to respond before the impact actually happens. Um, with that said, we have a new release of the SANS Slingshot C2 Matrix Edition. So this is a virtual machine that has multiple C2s pre-installed. Um, the goal is to lower that learning curve, right? If you've never set up or never installed a C2, maybe you've never used Docker or something like that, you can get straight to testing. Comes with Covenant, Empire, Quatic, Merlin, Metasploit, Mythic, Posh, Shadow, Silent Trinity, and Sliver already pre-installed you just download the vm you uh run it in your virtual machine and of course do not use it for production testing this is a lab environment um so with that please do get involved contribute um literally you can just ping us um like if you see a new c2 out there that's not on the c2 matrix just tag us tag at c2 matrix tag me bryson or adam we have a feedback form 
Um, if there's anything that's not accurate, right? C2's change, new features come out. Maybe we said that a particular capability was not in a, part, in a C2 and now it is. Let us know. We do all this for free, right? So uh, uh, definitely post those. If you share a blog post, if you tested one of these C2s, right? You just did a little how to, how to run something. Let us know. Um, and of course, if you evaluate any C2, uh, we would appreciate the whole line filled out and um, and have that information there. So I think uh, I have like three minutes left for questions. So uh, apologize for that. Uh, the MCs didn't want to be that guy. I, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have time for a whole lot of questions. We might be able to get one uh, in before the next speaker. However, if you want to answer questions in the Discord, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like C2. So we build a C2 that lets you C2 your C2s. Yeah, that's what it feels like. There's so many here. Is a college degree required for open source C2? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, some are some are getting more and more complex to install. Um, so yeah, that that's why we built the C2 the the slingshot um, is because they do get a little tough to install, and uh, that is not necessarily required to be an operator. So uh, we put that out there. You do need a degree to be uh, considered to contribute to the repo, though. You're going to be vetted, right? <laughs> yeah yeah so actually if you are so that's a great question to contribute a c2 matrix what i generally ask people is to just share the entire line because the matrix a lot of people are on it at like any given time so i don't give write access to a lot of people um there's a few like if you contributed a few times and we get know you right but you know some are random coming off the internet that we've never met before uh does not get full write access to uh to the c2 matrix now <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I thought this was open. I thought this was community driven. You know, I thought it was open yeah. to everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Still, still some hot sex. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is awesome. What a great Thank presentation. You very much. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, we've. Uh, uh, we're running a little short on time, but uh, like Joyo said, if you want to throw additional questions for Jorge down in the Discord, Jorge is hanging out there and is happy to answer every last one of them you have. He's got nothing but time, I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you all again. Uh, happy holidays. Thank you for doing this uh, on behalf of the, the community. Thank you for your time, for real. This it, It's hard to run these um, and keep them on schedule, so I'm going to shut up and talk to you all on Discord. Happy yeah. holidays. All right. Thanks a lot.